So I'm going to start off with a booktube tag. I've never done one before, but I thought I'd start. It's been a slow month as far as reading. I started the month off playing a lot of Last of Us, and then we had an anniversary getaway in Las Vegas, and so my reading has taken a bit of a nosedive. So this is the Unpopular Opinions book tag started by Book Archer. And looking at some of the other videos, a lot of people started off with their caveats and a lot of hand wringing and that please, please don't take offense as far as these unpopular opinions. But at the same time, this is book two. I hardly think that you guys are foaming at the mouth, rabid fanboys that are going to jump down the throat of someone just because they don't exactly like the book that you love. That being said, these are just opinions. Number one, name a book or a series that you did not like. And for me, this is The Giver. I know it's well-loved, winner of many awards, but to me it felt less written and more manufactured. And I understand that if you were to read this for the first time in middle school, this would blow your mind with some of its concepts. And that's great. But reading it as an older adult, I expect to find this in an English textbook along with a set of questions at the end of the story, like the sacrifices that people have made in this community to live. Do you believe that they are right? Why or why not? Set examples from the book. It really didn't ring my bells and uh, I found it kind of a plodding sort of read. Number two, name a book or series that everyone else hates but you love. For me, this would be The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. Now, this was one of those talked about books from years back, something that everyone seemed to be reading and talking about, and I thought that was awesome. It was great to talk to people who don't normally read or profess their love of reading and talk about this particular book. And you know what? I liked it so much I ended up buying the sort of huge textbook size version of it, complete with photos of uh, the Mona Lisa and other Da Vinci paintings. And the other great thing about it is more than one person that I know was enticed to actually start picking up nonfiction books as a result to learn about the Templars or something else. And I think part of it was that it made you feel smart. Some of the sort of mysteries weren't that difficult to solve, and you had this sort of smug sense of satisfaction after figuring it out. And it was just a fun, fun read. Number three, a love triangle where the main character ended up with a person you didn't want them to. Now this is where the tag shows its YA roots. A lot of the books I read don't really have love triangles, and I do find love triangles somewhat problematic. It's this weird thing where the woman is considered the prize, or her personality is defined by the man that she ends up eventually choosing. The only love triangle that I can really think of off the top of my head is Archie, Betty or Veronica. And a lot can be said about you by the choices that you make. I would think that Veronica would just throw Archie to the side after high school. Coming from incredible wealth, she's really going to need someone that can actually keep up with her and not embarrass themselves at a Michelin-starred restaurant and really run in the same sort of circles. And Betty, I think she has more self-respect than to wait hanging around for that sort of ginger doofus to decide between her or Veronica. Really, she's going to find someone that's dedicated solely to her. At least that's what I hope. Number four, a popular book genre that you hardly ever reach for. The obvious answer is romance, although I do want to read some more romance as part of this whole read harder idea. J.R. Ward's The Bourbon Kings probably wasn't a great place to start, but I'm not daunted and I think I will be able to find something but it's not something I generally reach for. Same goes for fantasy. I like the ones that I've read, but again, it's not one of those book genres that I generally go for. Number five, a popular or beloved character that you did not like. Okay, so Edward Cullen from the Twilight series seems the obvious choice. I mean, Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey, they're the nickelback of the literary set, the sort of agreed upon books that everyone hates. But at the same time, Edward, really, I have some problems with this guy. He's a sparkly vampire, and that in itself is a little troubling. But the idea of vampires, like Anne Rice's interview with the vampire, or this idea of people that have lived over generations, that have accumulated vast stores of knowledge. I mean, think of all the books you could read over several lifetimes, and all the observations that you could make about people. Now, imagine that you've lived countless lives, and you spent all of them in high school. That is some kind of hell, and I can't even begin to imagine going through high school, traveling to a different city, and going through high school again. I mean, that's horrible. And then when you think about it, this is someone who's probably older than your grandfather dating a high school girl. This is a sparkly senior citizen pedophile. I mean, it's just icky all around. And why does everyone seem to forget that? If you had lived countless generations, would you be hitting on high school girls? Number six, a popular author or series that you just can't seem to get into. And for me, I guess it would be David Eggers. I've started his heartbreaking work of staggering genius at least three times and have been, never been able to finish it. I hear the circle is great, but again, I'm still a little afraid to reach into that. 
Another would be Thomas Pynchon. The Crying of Lot 49, I think I've read five times, and I love that book. But for some reason, I cannot get through Gravity's Rainbow and really just sort of give up by the time I hit 200 pages. And I've tried at least three or four times. Number seven, a popular book trope that you are tired of seeing. For me, it is a trope that's common with YA books as well. The sort of plain Jane, unassuming, nondescript female character that is unremarkable in all ways until she's set into this situation and starts kicking ass, which in itself is great. She's got like ovaries of steel and really take no prisoners approach to life, leading a rebellion or just basically kicking all kinds of ass, but at the same time being the sort of waifish, hand-wringing girl that can't decide between her love interests. And it just seems like this huge disconnect between the two. I mean, I can't imagine Lisbeth Salander like hiding underneath her blankets and writing, Dear Diary, today I met a wonderful guy, but I don't know if he likes me or not. Ah, I don't know. It really bugs me every time I see it in a YA book or in books in general. Number eight, a popular series that you have no interest in reading. Hmm. Well, how about Divergent, Maze Runner, Mortal Instruments, Infernal Devices, uh, Twilight, Vampire Diaries? Yeah, they're all YA type books. And I'm sure they're fantastic, but I really don't have that much of a desire to read it. Game of Thrones as well is another one of those series I don't know if I'd ever start. It just seems overwhelmingly daunting. And I just, I don't know how I would even start something like that, even though I know I would probably like it. Pair that with the fact that I'm not really big on fantasy and it just does not seem likely. Number nine, the saying goes, the book is always better than the movie, but cite an example where you thought the opposite was true. I mean, the classic example is Blade Runner. It is the seminal sci-fi movie that's pretty well determined what other sci-fi movies look like, what the future looks like. And it is an incredible and one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. But it almost has nothing to do with the Philip K. Dick to Android's dream of electric sheep. A Clockwork Orange, fantastic movie. The book itself was okay. Andy Where's the Martian? I thought the book was okay and enjoyable, but I think the movie is going to kick ass. And then most recently, Gone Girl. I like the book and I like the movie. One wasn't better than the other, but I thought they were great. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that Gillian Flynn wrote the screenplay for the movie and it was in the hands of David Fincher, who's been doing great things with books lately. All right, so there you go. It's the Unpopular Opinions book tag. Actually, that was a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't had a chance to try it out, give it a shot. I'd love to see your videos as well.